I just would like to, f for my own knowledge, ask how many patients we have now in the audience. Okay, few. Nice. Welcome all patients and caregivers, doctors. Um, I've been asked to talk more about the relationship between patient and a doctor. Uh, I am a patient. For the last 10 years, I treat myself with medical marijuana, with cannabis plant material. I was introduced to um, cannabis therapy in Israel, where I used to live for 10 years. Uh, since I was 17, I um, do uh, my hormone uh, imbalance. I suffered from uh, PMS, premenstrual uh, syndrome disorder, and it's quite severe. For 10 days, 14 days before menstruation, horrible syndromes are starting. Between them, it's tension, pain, nausea. Um, the opiates that was prescribed by doctors after a series of uh, painful uh, shots every month, they were uh, making my doses of opiates bigger and bigger for every year. And in the moment when I left to Israel in 2000, um, Israeli doctors refused to prescribe such a big doses of opiates to me, and cannabis was suggested. Today I represent a non-registered uh, 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 organization, ZEST, Zjednoczone Eksperymenty Społecznej Tolerancji, United Experiments of Social Tolerance. This name uh, I created specially to emphasize the subject of the tolerance, unity, and the, the part that we are taking part in a big experiment on our own health. Project Phoenix, for last five years, educate patients, doctors, caregivers, and growers in all spectrum of cannabis treatment. I added here a quote of Sigmund Freud that more than, uh, more than 100 years ago he, um, he were already preparing society for new ways of therapies, therapies that will focus not on um, healing the organs but looking at the organism as a whole and treating energies of Vivian living life and in that way um, touching both pain, physical and mental. I will talk about cannabis therapy and cannabis treatment. For some, it can uh, sound like buttery butter, but those are two different things. Cannabis therapy and cannabis treatment um, they actually, to me, are a very big part taking in the harm reduction of the drug uh, market. Um, today, we have a tendency to talking about uh, symptomologies that uh, coming together with very serious sickness and palliative care. I would like to emphasize that we treating with cannabis, we do not really treating illness we do work on symptomology of the Western name of the illness as we agree to view it. So in my experience with myself and other patients, I do see that mostly cannabis helping in very simple symptomologies, but they are very um, important to our life. The, the nausea, the diarrhea, the headache, uh, lack of appetite, lack of sleep. When we hear about it, it seems like it's not a big deal, that it's not that important like cancer, multiple sclerosis, or Parkinson. But each of the uh, um, illnesses, they do have the bouquet of symptomology that cannabis treat. So some people have to use cannabis to the end of their life, for example, multiple sclerosis or PMS, veterans of PTSD, war. Usually they support themselves with the cannabis therapy through all of their life. 
For some, like for example, cancer um, uh, 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 patients, uh, some assimilate the therapy, cannabis therapy, with passing the chemotherapy on, or radiation. And very often after there is a su success or complete cure, the patients have a tendency to leave cannabis therapy behind because they don't need the support of the plant. They don't have nausea, they, they, they don't have diarrhea, they don't have a mood swing. So... Very often, when patients are using cannabis, their spouses or their caregivers using cannabis as well. Even they don't have prescription for the cannabis, the symptoms that uh, uh, family members can have during the illness and uh, suffering of their close one, anxiety, lack of sleep, they also can be treated with cannabis, but we are not saying that it's a cannabis therapy. Curing versus healing. Uh, this is dialogue that is happening between patients, patients and doctors. We like to say that cannabis cure cancer. Uh, usually cannabis curing symptoms. And if we would like to come to the stage of complete healing, other um, complementary uh, uh, effects should be added. Um, I do not know a patient who would heal himself only with cannabis. It's always a cannabis and other treatments. Sometimes it's a, a traditional treatment. Sometimes uh, it's uh, uh, Chinese medicine or acupuncture. Diet is very important because we have to remember that uh, when we are uh, receiving cannabis, we are actually helping our endocannabinoid system to receive all the nutri nutrition from food, to receive everything what is good in our medication in a small doses. So... We are talking about curing uh, uh, of symptoms. And if we're talking about healing of illness, we need to adopt uh, uh, complementary uh, methods to uh, cannabis treatment. Um, Michael, before me, he was stretching the fact that um, patient uh, access to cannabis is very important, but also... Uh, patient participation in growing their own medicine, it has uh, very big uh, uh, value of medical treatment. Uh, cannabis plant, it's a beautiful weed that grow pretty easily and quickly. And for patients that live in kind of stagnation of their illness, of the situation in their life that it's quite... Um, tragic and just to cope with all of that situation, to have un to unfocus ourselves from being sick and go to the garden, go to our plants and see every day new plant, new, new leaf and the grow. It's changing our relationship to time and it's changing our value of ourselves. We are still productive. It's really hard for uh, uh, sick people to take care of children or pets or puppies, but give a patient a plant and he will have this beautiful zone of his own that he can forget about his illness, forget about all the trouble that he's introduced to, and he can be productive and he can have an influence in his own therapy. So we are calling it the involvement from the seed to medical use. Before and after cannabis. Um, in Israel, after I've been introduced to cannabis therapy, I've been invited to a group that actually was training other patients how to use medical marijuana safely and effectively. So to me, the information around cannabis and its ancient information that it's aged at least for 5,000 years, it's the same important as plant. Uh, in my opinion, plant, it's 45% of 
success of healing, 55% coming from the training, from the support group, from the education, and from moving from the state of the illness and um, tragedy of life to being a productive, to meeting new people, people that have very similar problems, people that you can talk about your chemotherapy, radiation, throwing up or waking up, and they will understand. Patients need to have a field where they can share their experience, but without arming their close one. It's very hard to talk about illness to people that you see that they worry and they dying from, from worrying about you. So talking to other people that can make laugh about throwing up, I'm sorry, where they, they can be, make jokes about the condition, this is really relief for patients. In the, uh, in the experience of uh, uh, teaching patients to smoke cannabis, mostly I've been introduced to people that never had any experience with plant. So there are the phases that patients have to go through to get to know the plant. Uh, we heard uh, Yehuda Baru and we heard another uh, uh, specialist that were talking about small doses and introduction in a very um, efficient way. In Israel, um, to, uh, um, to persific persif excuse me for my English, to make a, a medication more per personal, we have to we had to. Um, try different kind of products, different uh, cannabinoid profiles, different strains. Usually a process like that taking around three months. So it's not a medicine that you're just giving a pill and saying to a doctor, go home and medicate yourself. First few sessions should be made with an experienced uh, wellness consultant, another patient that was successful in his therapy. And we can observe that the, the first-time user can have anxiety around using psychoactive uh, substance. Very often we're calling it a death of ego. It's the first time with person losing control over the wheel. And it's making very profound and very personal experience. Um, after that period, there is a general relaxation because a patient see that nothing really happened. He didn't die. And there is a general relaxation and a little bit uh, shift in, uh, uh, in observing of the body, uh, human relations. So um, it's very um, good if patient in that time have somebody who can listen to patient. Very often patient is opening himself for the trauma that he went through or the, 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 the pain or the fear. Uh, very often it's uh, related with crying. But the, the, the wellness consultant have to be there for him and say, okay, this is how it should feel. This is everything is okay. You're going through catharsis. So it's kind of cl emotional cleansing around the uh, state of um, physical uh, illness. And after this openness, in my opinion, healing is starting. So the place where the patient can express himself in any way, the place where it can be he heard, and the place where it feels safe. It's a very big a problem where patients trying um, very uh, high doses like uh, Rick Simpson oil concentrates because smaller dosage is giving a patient a bigger control over a psychoactive effect. And um, the first time is this more critical. The second time it's uh, similar, but the patient know what to expect. Um, the third time already he learned how to go through the memory and kind of coming back and look at his situation through the new vision that he had because he 
um, stop being a um, control freak. He understood that his body is his body, but he cannot really take full responsible for how he feel. So those things, relaxing patients and allowing a future therapy to be more successful. I talked a year ago more about uh, local legality and European patient rights, uh, active citizenship network in 2010, um, organized points that all of those points are uh, very valuable for all the patients that care about their rights to choose of the therapy, also the uh, cannabis therapy. This is one of the documents that helped me to protect myself in Polish court. I was arrested. I had a court case that ran uh, for two years. And uh, my medical use in Poland was recognized. I wasn't punished. And uh, actually from that time, from 2013, we do know that in Poland, medical marijuana, cannabis sativa L, is legal for per personal patient use, it's legal for experiments, and it's legal for industry. What is lacking is the, the um, safe um, space and the rules how cannabis can be prescribed, uh, there is a very big lack of education for doctors and unfortunately the groups of um, the legalization groups, the groups that try to legalize uh, all drugs for personal use, I, I really wish them good luck. I don't think that people should be punished for personal uh, choices. But actually, they did use medical marijuana case for a fight. They politicized subject. And even when the Ministry of Health uh, make an uh, announcement that uh, it's not true, medical marijuana can be used for patients, they did that announcement on writing in 2013, and they repeated it in 2015. Still, there is a very big group uh, that fight the system by fighting uh, hospitals, by fighting people. Uh, when I've been told in Israel how to do my work, I've been told that this is not field for war. This is place where everyone has to find uh, a mutual ground because there is, first of all, there is a place for everyone in this field, also for growers and producers. But patients cannot be represented by caregivers, producers, and people that were involved in drug legalization. We are grown-ups, not all medical marijuana patients in people are children, but the very big and known case is around um, uh, epilepsy treatment uh, in Centrum Zdrowia Dziecka in Poland. And it was very successful treatment. Uh, medical marijuana, uh, 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 um, Clinical studies uh, now are run in the most of the main major cities uh, according to a medical protocol. And actually the um, big misunderstanding around legality of uh, medical marijuana in Poland, it's actually a misunderstanding of how to run clinical studies. And one thing I have to be stretched to, that there are different laws when we talk about prescribing medicine or uh, um, a giving a medicine to a third part. And it's a different law when we're talking about our own use, our own responsibility, and experimenting on ourselves. Free access to cannabis education in all spectrum, access to medication, therapy, and growing. This is everything what Michael were talking before me. I will speed up here a little bit because we have time. Develop personification of the treatment. This is what I were talking before. In, um, in uh, 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 systems that completely regulate uh, cannabis or uh, uh, making it uh, um, not uh, uh, decriminalizing it, 
Um, recreational users can use cannabis as much as they want in any form they want. I think that uh, medical marijuana patients should have at least the same right, but of course there is a need for more uh, information and the education of patients should be uh, coming from knowledge that today we possess and the first uh, dosage or cannabinoid profile or the choose of product should be recommended by somebody who have at least 10 years of experience in the field. Those are my girlfriends from Israel and beautiful plants in the first uh, uh, legal grow in Israel. Um, we talk about self-training, the knowledge of medical marijuana therapy coming from patients and healers. It's old tradition, but it's talking about duplication of information. Nobody hold information, nobody sell information, nobody really make money on that information. That information should be completely uh, accessible to all. There are a lot of uh, uh, books that could be translated to many languages, but they will never be that good as uh, advice of a, a trained wellness consultant. We used to work with uh, ABC model, where A is the A person that have the knowledge, B is a person that making a connection, and C is a person that learn. When A is talking to C, B is listening, but this B is be quiet. That person is quiet, but the knowledge that can receive from being a present in a, such a personal uh, discussion, it's building over the time and over the years uh, uh, knowledge that cannot be by and cannot be really read in any book. Another very important thing is vocabulary around the medical marijuana use. We don't talk about a drug, uh, uh, drug, we talk about medicine. We talk about, uh, here we have uh, self-medicating, it sounds so much uh, better than uh, getting high. And I think that in the moment when we need to um, separate from recreational use, the language around the users have to be changed as well. From my experience, it's not only making a new field for patients to feel um, more comfortable and not really entering counterculture, but it's uh, much better for contact with doctors, with officials. So changing uh, name of marijuana to medical marijuana, it had very big importance. But as we see when we're using a name of cannabis, which is a just plant name, it's, it's the most effective because most of the people asking what is a cannabis? If they're asking what cannabis is, they are also asking about all the knowledge that's coming with the field of cannabis. And I have big respect to a gray market that support patients with products, but uh, their knowledge is not enough for patients to know what is good for them. So even if somebody is uh, uh, um, not growing but buying on the black market, still they should seek information in qualified wellness consultants. Uh, <laughs> I've been told that uh, during the first sessions, uh, all of those emotions are uh, revealed, trauma, pain, uh, relationships with spouses. And uh, some people talking about bad high or uh, a traumatic high. Uh, we are able, if we are doing it under control and with supervision of wellness consultant, we can stream this energy to something positive. Uh, canary, canard, canact, cannabis patient diaries, cannabis patient art, and cannabis uh, uh, patient theater. Some people um, never scream in their life, and they have so much anger, they, they really want to scream. We need to give them fields to scream. There are techniques to change uh, pillows and to have an inter-dialogue with yourself. There are uh, exercises for mothers and children that after application of medical marijuana, they draw AIDS with 
gray colors going to colorful colors from one hand, from another hand, both of hands. And it's all have very big uh, um, uh, influence, especially to making a balance between right and left uh, uh, side of a brain. So uh, accessing cannabis therapy, this is not just healing. This is dealing with the with past, with dealing with the monsters. And if we will channel them properly, we can have beautiful novels, beautiful books, beautiful songs, poems, and theater. Um, very often patients that start in cannabis uh, treatment, they are asked to run diary, to write everything, how was your, their appetite, how was their sleep, uh, what were the dosages and then general information about the day. It's not only help in the um, moment of arrest where you can prove that what you were doing, it have medical value, but it's also helping doctors. And we heard a lot of doctors and scientists that were saying that medical marijuana uh, research is very expensive. And I do believe that any research is expensive. But here we have a very special occasion where we have thousands of patients that can run their, their diaries. And only from the information that they will provide to scientists and doctors, they can have some kind of uh, uh, implications which strains are good for which illnesses, uh, what doses are the best for those patients. And of course, it will be not instead of the medical research, but it will be great implication and a start point for uh, doctors and specialists. Medical marijuana versus med medicine cannabis. This is what I were talking before. Today we like to talk medical marijuana, so have here it's organic bad or oil, go uh, treat yourself. Medicine cannabis, to me it's a medicine cannabis plus all the support network. This ABC network where I don't know some answer, I have so many friends and specialists that I can contact uh, with, that I can send patient to. So we are not uh, collecting patients. I don't have my patients. I really don't like when people saying my patient this or my patient that. Patients are their patients, okay? And the doctors can treat patients, but the healing we are doing. Cannabis support uh, group. This is, this is uh, uh, patients, doctors, and caregivers should be involved in the support group. Cannabis uh, house, uh, cannabis clubs. Uh, this we can observe even in the uh, uh, local um, societies where the cannabis laws are not really straight, but the support group can exist. Uh, cannabis and grow operation, as Mike said before me, patients should be involved in a grow operation. I know that there are many questions regarding if patients know how to grow. It's a weed, it's grow everywhere. If you have a good genetics and you have good education, you're able to grow your own weed. And if there is a, a question about uh, coming uh, of your product to the black market, uh, the medical marijuana agency that should be um, uh, uh, that should occur in every single country from 2010, we know that medical marijuana should be accessible for uh, patients, especially the one that deal with pain. So. Patient grow operation can be still under this agency umbrella. And then we also can use a lot of uh, uh, waste material that uh, most of the patients are not using for producing cheaper, good quality extracts and oils. Um, in medicine production, uh, patients are involved. We do make our own uh, 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 dry material, flowers, captures, tinctures, uh, uh, but I do see that there is and there will be a need for uh, standardization of the medicine, higher control and quality. But I don't think that it should be a choice between or this or this. A patient should have access to all homemade uh, cannabis butter and high uh, um, degree potency medication in pharmacy. 
Um, cannabis have very big positive in Western medicine. First of all, uh, many patients don't need to use that many uh, drugs. Most of the patients taking two, three uh, drugs for illness and then all the entourage of our chemical uh, um, drugs are uh, uh, added to it just to deal with the side effects of the medication. So um, today we know that we can not only save money on our medical system, but we can save patients from poisoning of legal uh, pharmaceuticals. Medical prescription ver versus medical recommendation. Today in Poland, um, Patients can uh, possess sativex. Uh, patients can uh, receive uh, dry plant material from um, a closed loop system from Holland, the Bedrocan. And uh, another uh, way that most of the patients are holding t close to their heart, that they do grow their own medicine. Of course, with growing their own medicine, they are um, victims to crimi criminal law. So um, what we are trying to do uh, from the first steps of uh, um, use of cannabis in Poland, we try to uh, separate use, uh, uh, med medical use from uh, recreational use. So if you are not sick to MS or you don't have, you are not palliative care uh, a patient, actually you cannot buy legally cannabis. Um, but I did grow my own cannabis. The legality of my seeds was recognized by high court and I wasn't punished by, for uh, growing my cannabis. Um, I do hold recommendation of American doctor and today also I do hold recommendation of Polish doctor. One of our um, educational sites in Poland is to teach doctors how to prescribe uh, uh, how to write uh, recommendation. What is the difference be between prescription and recommendation? First of all, prescription cannot be given to any drug that ha is not registered in the country. So today the Sativex is registered, but also it's very expensive and not every pharmacy can have it. But the doctors can, can do recommendations. So according to the knowledge that they have, they're writing, this is my patient, and he used this and this, and there was chemotherapy, and it was this and this treatment. And um, anecdotally, uh, a patient is saying that cannabis is helping in this symptom, and this symptom, and this symptom. So for what I know today, according to actual medical knowledge and my opinion, I do prescribe cannabis to that patient, but I'm not giving um, a, an address or I'm not uh, contacting patient to uh, a producer. Why doctor have to write this? If he will not, he will be part of a uh, dealership. So by, by re recommending cannabis, to patients that grow, for example, for themselves, they feel more secure to do their own medicine holding uh, in their uh, uh, pharmacy recommendation of a doctor. Uh, we're talking a lot about patient and doctor emancipation. Patient sh all patients should have access to cannabis if it treats their uh, 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 symptoms. And all doctors should have right to prescribe or recommend cannabis. The experience from Israel, there, there is always when there is a legalization of medical marijuana, we have very narrow list of uh, sicknesses. And then the list is growing. It's not because people finding out that cannabis is helping to more people. It's more related to uh, availability to uh, produce medicine. Uh, it's taking time. At Israel, first there was four growers. Now there is eight growers. So just to have a monopoly on the market, the, the, the list is narrow and then it's growing. But patients have a right to respect their time, their illness, and their right to heal themselves with anything what will have benefit. Uh, healthy patients, healthy relations. Um, 
prophylactics and drug harm reduction. Very often we talk about teenagers that using recreational drug. We're talking about arms of uh, using cannabis without being sick. Um, in my training, I've been told that cannabis is a medicine and whoever is using cannabis treating symptoms. And I know that sometimes it's cooler to be just dude and smoke and have fun, but even dudes have PTSD, even dudes have ADD. So I, I'm calling for more of the respect of youth, young patients that using cannabis. My introduction in Israel is related to uh, women and youth uh, uh, application. In Israel, young boys and girls from the age of 12, 13 to the age of 20, 21, they are supported by cannabis. Uh, I'm talking about Orthodox communities, religious Jews that still using cannabosum, cannabis, as a one of the um, uh, medications that help youth to grow through puberty. Uh, um, Jewish youth is a challenge with genetics because there are there were a lot of not too much mix in genetics, so there are some uh, uh, illnesses that uh, other people don't have. So um, cannabis do help boys with their puberty and also assist the w young girls uh, with uh, periods and hormonal change as well. We're saying that puberty is not illness, but I just would like to say that not all youth surviving puberty. For some, the hormonal disbalance is so huge that they're taking their own life. So I would uh, be a little bit softer on the young users, especially those that are uh, 12, 13 years old and above. They should have... Uh, 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 they should have help, they shouldn't be treated like minors, even in the Polish medical law, 13 years old boy or girl can decide if want to be a donor, if want to donate kidney to a mother, for example, so they should be also able to decide what treatment they want to have. Most of children today, they're taking so many chemical drugs for being just a child, but we have sophisticated names for it and uh, many parents don't have really time to deal with the uh, core of the issue and they just dealing with the um, symptoms prescri prescribing the drugs for their children. Life over profit, I think that many speakers talked about it. It's really important not to lose the focus. It's a new industry. It will bring a lot of uh, uh, wellness also in monetary uh, uh, field. But um, today, for example, in Poland, we have a situation when uh, one month treatment of CBD oil costs more than 1,000 euro. Patients... Uh, and their caregivers spending life savings to treat with hemp oil. So um, we do have to have access to products that are not sell for benefit of black market because most of those products are not registered as a medical product. But we need to uh, uh, unite and in the groups we have to... Uh, uh, help ourselves to create safe product with low, the lowest cost is possible. We need to uh, really stretch uh, the uh, matter of right genetics. Uh, I do use uh, one hybrid, it's uh, uh, African Indica, and I never smoke anything other than my own strain. My strain balancing me. I do smoke to come out from dysphoria. Uh, P PMS patients have dysphoria, so when we smoke, the euphoria in dysphoria bringing us back to just normal functioning. Uh, uh, overdosing on cannabis is sometimes uh, um, recommended in a, in a big time of stress in some, but the overdose is just mean to being a little bit more in the head high than relaxation of the body. Uh, today, market offer feminized seeds. To me, those are just GMO seeds. Um, 
it's really important to possess uh, plant genetics from growers that never use any pesticides, that their combination of uh, uh, plants were done uh, also with the patients, together with patients that could um, give a feedback to a grower how this plant, how this cannabinoid uh, uh, um, uh, cannabinoid diversity work on symptomology of those patients. Um, the access for medical products should be also for their caregivers. Let's remember that some of the patients, especially palliative care and children, they are not able to uh, uh, obtain their medicine. Therefore, the caregiver should be treated uh, with empathy as much as patients are. We need to remember that cannabis is going to play a role not only in, uh, uh, um, in the pain or uh, diseases like cancer, but there are more and more civilization diseases related to stress and out of balance life. There are no illnesses that are more important or less important. The one that is the most important is the hours. So let's give other patients access to it, even if it's not serious as, as a cancer. There are many Kana kids. As I said, there are many uh, uh, products. Uh, it's good to use products uh, from the uh, patients and patients' collectives that grown-ups already use the product. They can inform caregivers about the benefits. And uh, let's not forget about stimulation uh, during the ther ther uh, cannabis therapy and after. Um, Cannabis is not just a drug in pill. Cannabis is something that opening us, changing our perspective. And in that moment, a physiotherapy should be done. In that moment, uh, any other a, a complementary therapy should be done. Um, a lot of can cancer survivors, um, they still have to have access to cannabis. Uh, some cancers are cured completely, but we all uh, talk about um, uh, still supporting endocannabinoid system. And, uh, and uh, uh, even if somebody's uh, diagnosis are showing a complete cure from cancer, it doesn't mean that patient, ex-patient, doesn't need cannabis supplementary. Um, for last 10 years, we are in a war in the Middle East. Uh, there are thousands of very young boys, young men that suffer into, into PTSD. It's, a, it's a not only private illness. This illness affects all society. And this is a group of uh, uh, our society that should be taken care of. And they are a really strong group that can lead the medical marijuana movement. Uh, we need to use only safe medicine. We need to know the origin. It's very good if we can uh, test it. And let's remember that cannabis have synergistic relationship with other chemicals. If we add in cannabis to um, pharmaceutical drugs, we need to talk to doctor and ask exactly what the drug is on what. I always promoting to include doctor in a, in a uh, process. Not always is to, is possible, but uh, doctors today are much more open than we think. Uh, trust uh, play a very big role in uh, 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 cannabis cooperation. Self-education, the exchange of uh, information between patients is very important. Most of the information that we hold today is coming from patients. On these pictures are two patients. They both, unfortunately, <coughs> are deceased. But to the end of their life, they had purpose to wake up. They had friends. They, they could be accepted for who they are and how they are and how they want to treat themselves. Um, 
very important is to, we talk about experiments, it's important to work with patients, not on patients. There are some uh, cases in Poland that uh, patients were introduced to Rick Simpson oil before being introduced to whole plant material. I think that it's a little bit cruel. Um, concentrates are uh, cannabis THC. is very powerful. It's very powerful whole plant with huge, huge energy. And it's good that it's introduced slowly and with full understanding of patient. The, the patient should have right to choose uh, how to administrate even if he have to make his own mistake, he will not die from it. But sometimes the intuition of patient is stronger than a, a, a practice of a wellness consultant or a doctor. This is our website. Uh, together with Mike, we try to answer all the questions from all the field. We are very selective. We do work only with patients and their caregivers. We usually ask them to send um, a, a letter with their why they want to be in program. Um, they also need to present a document that shows the uh, recognition of the uh, illness. And then they are uh, completely supported in all information, what to do to separate their use from recreational use. Today, it's a, it's, it's a writing a letter to Ministry of Health. Every letter that coming back to patient have a special signature number. This first signature number is very important. It's individual number of the patient. This is also a letter that giving um, a validation for a doctor to prescribe uh, Sativex uh, um, uh, import, direct import, or just write the recommendation. And there are many uh, ways that we worked with that they working, that patients are not prosecuted, and even if they are, they are not, uh, the, their actions are decriminalized. And uh, we're going to pursue with our work. If anyone would like to contact us, not only today, but in the future, on our website, you will find uh, contact to both me and Michael Correll. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Dzień dobry. Mam na imię Jimmy. Hi, my name is Jimmy. I've got a simple question for you. How on earth you got such a big belief in Polish laws? Because as far as I know, Oh, most of the things you said I really admire, but about Poland, everything, well, most of the things you said is in theory. You said it's easy to get, a, uh, I mean, there's a way to get a medicine as a cannabis, yes? Why on earth then uh, Mrs. Dorota Godanez had to go through 42 dispensaries and they all refused to give her that medicine? I'm not attacking you, I'm just asking you, where do you take your belief? Because now, with Peace Party taking the control of our government, I can't see that happening for the next 10, maybe 20 years. And you sound so positive. I can't really understand. Where do you get it from? Okay, thank you for a question, because in Poland there is a lot of misunderstanding of the subject. Um, I'm talking about this subject for last five years in Poland. The first conference happened in 2011, where we proposed the solutions. And actually, since then, we had a lot of opposition of the groups, they're called, uh, the trying liberate, liberate uh, uh, drug laws. So um, I've been uh, registered as a lobbyist in Polish parliament. I did personally met with all parties, with ministries. Um, I personally received answers from six ministries that had opinion about it. The first uh, 
the first patients that contact us were actually sent it by Ministry of Health. We've been uh, invited to, uh, uh, to uh, con conferences by Ministry of Health. And in 2013, um, actually, the Ministry of Health answered to uh, a Polish same that it's not true that patient cannot uh, treat himself with cannabis. Cannabis sativa L can be used only for medical uh, purposes, industrial purposes, and experiment. In Polish law, we have two tables. Uh, uh, you talked about it. The, the second, Pavel, <laughs> thank you. The second group and th fourth group. In the th second group, we have cannabis sativa L that can be used for medical uh, 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 reasons, all the tinctures, oils, etc. The fourth group is marijuana. I don't know how smart they were writing this law, but they do use two words. One, it's a cannabis, it's a plant. You cannot, in a Polish law, the, the seeds of plants are legal. You cannot delegalize it. But marijuana, this is the name of the street. This is the, the dirty plant that it's spray with her spray and put with dopalache and God knows what. So there is... And, if you understand Polish, in Polish dialogue, nobody, yes, Polsky, tak. nobody really talked cannabis. There was one conference that was cannabis letter, and after that, everybody come back talking marijuana, marijuana. And I do see this as a challenge for uh, marijuana laws and the general liberalization of the laws, which is okay with me, but it has nothing to do with cannabis. The Ministry of Health said that medical marijuana is legal. The patients are using medical marijuana and I wasn't arrested or paid any fees or work uh, in the mind for it. So I do have personal experience that I can talk about it. And I do have also personal experience with patients that do step by step and even inviting police members to tell them what they're going to do and police is protecting their crop. And in the moment when doctor want to tell on them to the Ministry of, of uh, uh, Justice, oh, there was a crime, then the police say, no, no, there wasn't a crime. I knew about it. This is used for medical purposes. So I do understand our Slavic uh, hot blood. We like to fight. But in this matter, we don't need to fight. There is a peace, and we just need to understand the, the yeah, there problem. There is a peace, definitely. There is a peace now. Thank you for this question. No worries. Thank you very much.